Well, Nicole Parker is a uh, former FBI special agent. We, she scrambled to help us out last night. And now, we, uh, uh, eight, nine hours later, we still don't have the person of interest. Nicole, going over the case in your head, what do we know for sure, and how would that affect what you're doing right now if you were in charge of this case? This is complex. This is an extremely complex situation. I can tell you I've responded to um, several mass shootings, and typically the shooter is apprehended, and in a lot of instances, the, the shooter ends up taking their own life. This is unique. The shooter is on the loose, and it is extremely important that the citizens in that community continue to shelter in place. Right. Obey what law enforcement tells you to do. Do not leave your home if you do not need to. If you for some reason, believe that you've come in contact with them or you have a tip or a lead for law enforcement, you call 911 immediately. You do not go towards the shooter. And it's important that people understand that this is very different than the typical situation. Like I said, we, we just recently, you know, went over the Pennsylvania manhunt with Cavalcante. Mm -hmm. That was extremely different. He hadn't just shot and killed 22 individuals. This individual has already proven that they are extremely violent. They've already killed 22 individuals. and. The fact that they are not cooperating with law enforcement are not turning themselves in, you need to be extremely careful. And individuals in the area continue to say, our community was so safe, we never thought it would happen here. Right. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but nowhere in this country is safe anymore. You have to be very careful. The advice I will always give, if I can just give one piece, run, hide, fight. If you are ever in an active shooter incident, that could potentially save your life. Run hide and fight. And apparently, Nicole, it was a kid's night at the bowling alley. And that image of him with the gun is from the bowling alley. Yeah. Uh, Look at the it, door. It was a kid's league at the bowling alley as he came in, and people did run and hid in the pin machines. But here's the thing. There were dozens of other people in that bowling alley who survived and in the restaurant that he also went to and survived. But as you know, as law enforcement, you sit down and you ask somebody, OK, what did you see? What did you hear? Uh, describe it to me. They all have different points of view, and they all are going to say different things. The one great thing is we've got this surveillance video that shows it's him. Right. And surveillance is very powerful in this instance. Like I've said many times, his face is uncovered. So those in the community, they know who he is. They were able to identify him. And if you see him out and about, you need to memorize his picture. Thank you to the media for continuing to plaster his picture everywhere. If you see him, you call 911 immediately. I think it's important, again, to note how important those witness interviews are. Of course, when we conduct investigations, it's natural that people are going to have a different recollection of what they saw. But when you're interviewing literally potentially hundreds of people, you piece together all of the information, you piece together the surveillance, you piece together, you know, license plate readers that may have tracked where the car went. The car went, again, we're understanding to a, a boat dock. I've worked cases where the individual ends up jumping into the river. I had it happen here in Miami. The individual jumped into the river, he was armed, had the gun. We don't know where he, this individual is. He could be on the loose. He could have, you know, be in the forest. He could have committed suicide or he could be long gone. Yeah. So it's important that everyone takes all precautions. I think another important thing is that this is all hands on deck. This is local, state, and federal. When you report to an active shooter, it's typically going to be the local law enforcement agency. It's their jurisdiction. They're going to take lead on the case. And you've mentioned and reported the FBI is there. Of course, the FBI is going to be there. Um, after the Sandy Hook shooting, there was a law signed into uh, in around 2013 that said if there's an active shooter incident, that the FBI can participate at the request of the local law enforcement agencies. The FBI can bring in tremendous resources. I can tell you right now that the SWAT teams, the tactical teams from the FBI are there on site. FBI Boston, the multiple resident agencies located in the main area. The FBI is providing likely the hostage rescue team, hostage negotiators. This individual, if he is still on the loose, he could potentially take hostages. It's important that we look at all the resources that are being used. The behavioral analysis unit of the FBI is potentially being tapped into. The evidence response team. What you see in the media is just a sliver of what is going on behind the scenes. But you Nicole, have individuals at multiple crime yeah. scenes. You have individuals conducting analysis behind the scenes, yeah. running through their social media, scrubbing accounts, going through executing search warrants, yeah. going to homes, conducting family member interviews. What is the pathway to violence for this individual? He didn't just wake up, I guarantee you, he did not just wake up yesterday and say, I'm gonna go and shoot up this bowling alley tonight. I guarantee you that this was this was planned. There was a precipitating stressor that led to this. 
There was a moment where this person said, today is the day and I am going to do this. And again, the behavioral analysis unit is going to be looking at the ideation, the grievance, what was it that caused them to do this? Did they have a, obviously they have a mental history. They're always going to be looking at that. But Nicole, you, they, you, what, law, what medications yeah. were they on? Things like that. Yeah, Nicole, but law enforcement, the elephant in the room is if, if you look at the shooter as we're putting some of his photos on the screen, how he crouches, how he holds his weapon. He's, he's a part of the military, and the basis of the FBI SWAT unit, as well as other law enforcement, is a military strategy. So he's familiar with the strategy. He knows how to evade uh, and capture. Um, so is law enforcement going to deal with that issue as they try to go after someone that knows their strategies? Oh, absolutely. And Lawrence, that's a very important point because this is not just, you know, someone off the street who, this is a highly trained individual that, you know, we understand potentially had, you know, been a firearms instructor, mm -hmm. former military. This is extremely dangerous. People need to understand and respect what law enforcement is faced with every day. They are expected to go towards this right. shooter. You know, there's different agents. I was on the Violent Crime Fugitive Task Force here in the Miami Division of the FBI. When I was going out, I had specific, a special vest. We had ceramic plates. If you were on violent crime, you know, these SWAT members, they have a lot of extra protection, armored vehicles. They have a lot of tools and resources that, you know, a, a, a regular officer or law enforcement officer may not have, but it is extremely dangerous. And again, this is after they have shot and killed 22 people and potentially injured several more. I think another thing that I want your audience to understand is this is not, the, de the death notification process, I've heard that spoken about, yeah. that is the most delicate portion of this entire tragedy, is having to tell a family, a loved one, your family member or loved one is never coming home again. Yeah. Okay, I've, I've, I've done it. I've been a, I've had to do that at the Parkland school shooting. I was involved at the Fort Lauderdale airport shooting. Law enforcement has to get it right. And I understand that there's a sense of urgency. Family members deserve to know as quickly as possible. But when you're going into a crime scene, multiple scenes, they have to identify, first of all, who the deceased are. Sometimes they may not have an ID. You may have to ask for photos from loved ones. There might be potential need for DNA, but you cannot get that wrong. That is the worst, absolute horrific nightmare, and my heart goes out to these family members who have lost their loved one. Nicole, do you think that, that he planned all of this? Do you think he knew someone at the bowling alley, knew someone at the bar? You know, I don't, I don't want to jump to conclusions here because it's going to be a very thorough and sophisticated and complex investigation that's ongoing. Obviously, the number one priority for law enforcement right now is to apprehend the suspect. But Ainsley, it wouldn't shock me these shooters, a lot of times they want attention. They want to get, it's disgusting and evil to say, but the most bang for their buck. And I saw it right. myself here at the Parkland school shooting. He intended to shoot even more than he did. And these people know where there's gonna be the largest population. This is a, you know, a smaller town from what I understand, maybe 30 to 40,000 individuals. Oh, trust me, he knew exactly where he was going. He was familiar with the bowling alley, familiar that it was the league night for the youth. That is absolutely evil and disgusting and despicable. And Americans need to right. be on high alert wherever you are. So You've so got they, to keep your head on a swivel. So, Nicole, they normally do plan it. I'm, I was just wondering, like, in, in, in your experience, do they usually plan it? Or is it like he's driving down the road and he's really he mad at someone in his family and he snaps and he just is, happens to be driving by the bowling and, alley? No, in my experience, Again, we cannot say I don't ever want to jump to incorrect yeah. conclusions, but there was likely a lot of planning that went into this. I mean, he was fully armed. He had extensive amounts of ammunition. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to firmly believe that this was highly planned out and that there was just a moment that he said, this is the day, this is what I'm going to do. All right, Nicole, thank you very Thanks, much for Nicole. joining us from Florida you. with your expertise. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.